All right, class. <clears throat> Today we're about to talk about these quadratic functions and their properties. And we already know that the form for a quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c. That's presented. The reason why a cannot equal zero because if a equals zero, then this right here would no longer exist and therefore it would no longer be a quadratic function. It would then become a linear function. All right. Uh, a little recap. We know that the degree of all quadratic functions, can I move this thing? The degree of all quadratic functions have the degree of degree two. All right, and degree is identified by the greatest exponent inside of the quadratic function. All right, now a few things about these quadratic functions. All right, we're gonna talk about the properties. Let's just go ahead and slide on through this. The graph of a quadratic function, it'll appear, it is, the name is a, a parabola, but it opens up like this if the leading coefficient is positive, meaning if A is positive, if A is positive, then the graph opens up. You know what I'm saying? It looks happy, got a little smile, little nose, look like a little happy face, positive people smile. All right. <clears throat> now, if A is negative, a is negative, then your parabola is going to open down. You know what I'm saying? Negative people usually have that down looking face. Now here's a little kicker, right? All right, so let's just go ahead and call out these other components. The highest or lowest graph on the graph of quadratic is known as the vertex. So this highest or lowest point on the graph of a quadratic is the vertex. So if, if A is positive, the vertex would be at a minimum location. If A is negative, the vertex would be at the maximum location. All right. The vertex itself is calculated by first identifying the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry. So first we have to calculate the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes through the middle of your function and is x equals, I like to say b over negative 2a, so that we don't ever forget that, to put that negative sign there. Again, x equals b over negative 2a. That is your axis of symmetry. Now to find out what this vertex point is, we have to plug in the axis of symmetry into your function to get the y value. All right, the x value is the x value of your vertex. Once you get that x value, you plug that into your quadratic function, get the y value, let's keep rolling. All right, so we just talked about this. So we're gonna go ahead and jump to some examples, right? All right, so we're gonna do all of these examples because this thing gonna pop up like this in your homework. And I don't want you to say, oh, drummer hit me with a blind side surprise. No, I didn't. All right, I already did a work down. I already worked out an example. That's one that you can review later. You know, just slow the video down and just go through the steps, see if you get that stuff. And then we're gonna go ahead and work one together. All right, so here we go. Part A says, part A says, 
does the graph open up or down all right so up or down we're going to look at the leading coefficient the leading coefficient we have a equals negative one and we said if a is negative then the graph will open down down because a equals negative one now part b asks will you have a maximum or minimum again if a is negative then you're going to have a max part c says what is the axis of symmetry now here it goes into your calculation phase x equal b over negative 2a what's the value of b come on somebody talk to me i'm not in the classroom actually huh okay the value of b is 4 over negative 2 times the value of a which is negative 1 and we identify that from each of these components if it helps you to write right here a b c hey use what you got all right now part d says what is the vertex so the vertex let's go ahead and we know oh we didn't simplify this this will be simplified to positive two my apologies we know the x value of the vertex which is two the y value we calculate the y value by plugging it back plugging the x value back into the function all right so the function is wx so we're going to plug that x value in now let's find out what the y value is w of 2 is equal to negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 5 notice how i put that two in parentheses and i make that negative go in parentheses so that gives us negative four plus eight plus five will give us positive four so our vertex we have a maximum point at two four part e part e says what are your intercepts all right so the easiest intercept to calculate is the y-intercept all right so the y-intercept when your function is in standard form like this standard form in ax squared plus bx plus c the y-intercept is going to equal c so the y-intercept is c equal 5 and as a point the y-intercept is 0 5 now the x-intercept we'll use the quadratic formula to find the x-intercept all right just for a reminder we'll toss that quadratic formula up here quadratic formula x equals and this is quadratic formula x equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a all right now b squared minus 4ac that is your discriminant I like to calculate that part first whenever I use quadratic formula. All right, so b squared minus 4ac. So we have 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is 5. That gives me a value that's 16 plus 20, 36. 
since my discriminant is positive, this lets me know I have two x-intercepts. Two x-intercepts. Because the discriminant is positive. Alright, so find those x-intercepts. x equals. And I guess I need to go ahead and write this down here at the bottom. My x-intercepts. x equals. Using the quadratic formula. The opposite of b. We have negative times 4 plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, which is 36, all over 2a. And that is equal to, we have negative 4 plus or minus 6. I'm going to write it as two different equations, negative 4 plus 6 over negative 2. And the other one is negative 4 minus 6 over negative 2. Your two x-intercepts are negative 1. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2 over negative 2. That gives us negative 1. And negative 10 divided by negative 2 is positive 5. So your two x-intercepts are 0. I'm sorry, negative 1, 0 and five zero part f wants to know where is your function increasing where is the function increasing all right so it wants to know the intervals of increase and decrease i think that's what it asked for let me check Oh, no, it doesn't. It says graph the function. My apologies. All right, so we're going to graph this function right quick. Part F wants us to graph the function. Let's just draw a little graph, you know? So we have, boom. That's a little Cartesian plane laid out right there. All right, so let's just plot some points right quick. We got negative one and then we have let's put some colors on here it's negative one zero that's our first x intercept and one one two three four five so we have our x intercepts on the graph negative one zero Five zero, and then we want our y intercept on the graph. Y intercept on the graph. The y intercept is zero five. One, two, three, four, five. We got our y intercept on the graph right there. Solid y intercept. All right. Then you also want to go ahead and put your your uh, vertex on the graph. <laughs> my vertex is wrong that vertex should be nine why y'all let me go through that whole thing and then tell me I, I had made a little miscalculation that y value of that vertex should be nine womp womp okay so now we have plotting our vertex we have One, two, and we're gonna go up nine. We're already up five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. And then we go ahead and connect the dots. All right, we have right here, zero, five. Right here, the vertex is at 2, 9, and this dotted line right through the middle right here going 
What would that dotted line be? Man, y'all intelligent. That dotted line is your axis of symmetry at x equal 2. So you got your graph, all right? Once you get your graph laid out, then it wants to know the domain of the function. It's a quadratic function. Since it's a quadratic function, the domain of all quadratics is all real numbers. An interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. And we almost there, team. We're almost there. All right. Now we want to know where the function is uh, increasing and decreasing. All right. Uh, no, we don't. We want to know the range. All right. The range. The range. All right. So right, let's look at our information. Right. We said the function is going to max out so it can't go up forever so since it can't go up forever then we got a barrier on how far it can go but it goes down forever so if it's going down forever it's going to go down to negative infinity now let's talk about this barrier where it maxed out we want to go to that maximum y value. You go to the y value of your vertex. So that maximum y value is at 9. Boom, there's your range. Finally, we get to where I've been trying to get to forever. The intervals of increase and decrease. These are quite easy. Right, because I got a slick little trick I'm about to show y'all for this, right? Alright, so we want to know where the function is increasing and decreasing. So... I'm just going to draw this little line. I'm going to draw. Oh, slowly roll screen. Y'all can see that line, that red line that I just drew there. That red line says it's increasing because it's going up. So just draw your little hyper increase. Then on the other side, you're clearly going down. Decrease. You just identified the locations for the intervals of increase and decrease. All you got to do now is put it on paper. All right. The interval of increase. It's increasing. This function is coming from negative infinity until it gets to the axis of symmetry. So it's increasing from negative infinity to 2. And then we're going to decrease. It's going to decrease. From, watch it, to, to positive infinity. Boom. That's the lesson, team. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Reach out in the comment section or whatever. We got this. Let's move forward. All right.